This is a full tutorial on how to get started with a drip irrigation system. I'll show you what needs to go in your head assembly, what tubes and fittings are most commonly used, how to separate your drip system into different pressure sections for multiple uses, and several different kinds of emitters and drippers. I'll give my opinion about the new EVE Aqua Smart Water Controller. I'll compare different types of fittings and tell you which one I like better how to properly assemble them, all in an effort to speed up the learning curve to get you started with a good drip system that works for you automatically today. Welcome to Kyler's studio. Now I divided this all into sections. We're gonna start first with the head assembly, what you need to put in order from your spigot, the very beginning of your system. So I'm using the spigot for this assembly. The first thing is a brass Y valve, so I can also use a hose. Now for the quick connect, I'm using this Ely, E-L-E-Y. It's a really high end and expensive uh, premium connector for garden hoses. It comes in two pieces, uh, the male and the female, and it uses an O-ring, and you're supposed to buy a little lubrication to keep it lubricated, but it's the easiest to put on and take off. You'll notice that it's already pre-lubricated when it comes in the box. You can see printed on the valve itself, it says it's a silicone grease, and they recommend using the LE brand silicon grease. Anyway, so far it has been excellent. No leaks, and I bought a few, and I think these will last for longer than I will. So next, here is my head assembly that I'm going to use. So take a look at this. These don't necessarily have to be in the exact same order, but this order seemed to make sense for me. So first thing off the Y valve is this backflow valve. Now the reason I have this is that once the water comes through into my drip system, I don't want any extra pressure to allow it back into the pipes in my house. Now, different fittings have different pressure ratings, PSI, pounds per square inch. Check it to see that you're at least getting roughly 60 PSI. This one went up to like 120 PSI, so it was plenty. Coming out of my house was kind of the max, about 60 to 70 PSI. So let me show you how this works. So I have my drip system set up here. Um, I'm opening... Uh, the valve through the spigot and it's going in through the whole drip system. Now, with all that pressure, say I want to come around and use my hose. So right now I'm just checking for leaks, but say I want to come and use my hose system. Well, when I relieve that, open that valve for my hose, all that water that's pressurized from the system is going to flow back into potentially my culinary. But what this backflow valve does is prevents it from going back into the house by, there you go, look at that, bursting all the water back out, not allowing it back into the pipes inside my house. So you might be able to wrap some extra Teflon or something to prevent this big mess from happening, but it looks like, at least in theory, it's doing what it's designed to do, not letting the water flow back into the house. The next is the drip filter. Now, the purpose of this is to catch any little pieces of debris or little pieces of maybe like sand-sized things coming through your water system. You see, it just screws off, and then there's this little screen that catches any particulates in there, so you can take it out and clean it once in a while. The reason you want this is because if there are any little pieces of sand or something that make it through the system, those little pieces of sand can clog your little teeny tiny emitters and that could cause you problems down the line. Now, the next is a valve system or a timer system that you use to control when all the water flows through your system. Now, they make these timers, you know, like those Christmas tree timers that you just plug into the wall and manually set. Or they make these valves that you can digitally set how often and when you want it to run. So those are a little bit cheaper. But I went with the EVE smart valve because I think it's cool. I can turn on my system from my phone while I'm testing, or I can turn it off when I'm on vacation because I detected a leak from a leak sensor, or I could measure how much water is coming through my system. So there are definitely less expensive options, but this is cool. It definitely doesn't come without any quirks though. The setup was relatively easy once you figured out how to get the batteries in. But I'll be honest, the design for the battery holder is terrible. What they want you to do is pull the tabs on the outside away from the pack and then sort of 
jostle it and wiggle it so it stops connecting on the bottom with the plastic. So that front plastic cover completely removes, so then you can slip both the batteries into the correct cartridge. So don't use any, there's no screwdrivers required, there's no tools required, it just is supposed to come out of there, but it's a little bit sticky, but that's how you're supposed to do it. Ask me how I know. As far as the setup goes and adding it to HomeKit, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I went to the Eve app and downloaded that and it automatically added to HomeKit after I added it into the Eve app. So depending on how high your spigot system is, you may need to dig a route for the head assembly, which is my case here. And I decided that I'd rather dig it out. The other option is you can connect a short hose and go and mount it in a different spot. Now, the hose that we're going to use for this is uh, called half-inch poly, or half-inch polyethylene tubing, or also known as PE. Now, different companies make poly in slightly different sizes. There's an inside diameter and an outside diameter. So if you look at this, the third bullet down, drip tubing diameter, 0.6 inches ID, which is inside diameter, by 0.7 OD outside diameter, which means 0.05 wall set thickness. So just make sure that all the pieces you get, all the connectors, make sure they are compatible with the size of tubing that you buy. Okay, let's talk about connectors for the half inch poly, because not all connectors are created equal. There are different brands who make different types of connectors. Now this connector is called Drip Lock. It's by Hydro Rain or Orbit. It's kind of like the shark bite for the PEX. What you do is you shove the poly in there and then there's these, a bunch of these little pins that just lock around the poly. Now, if you want to disconnect it, you squeeze the pins down and then you should, in theory, be able to slide the poly out of that. Though in practice, it's harder than it looks. Something that helps is when you push the poly deeper in as you're squeezing the pins down, Pushing the poly in and squeezing it will help you be able to pull the poly out of it a little better. But one reason I don't love these is because that maneuver right there is pretty difficult. Now, these can leak a little bit if you don't shove them really far into there. But I've noticed if you really shove it in there, then they don't leak, even with like 70 to 90 PSI static pressure. Now, the connector that I ended up preferring is this. It's called the permalock coupling by drip depot permalock tubing coupling now they have a graduated barb so you slide the poly onto the barb and then you twist it's opposite threaded you twist the outer lock and lock it down onto the barb and it creates an excellent fitting that definitely won't leak now they have different types of adapters they have valves they have a rotational swivel irrigation fitting so it will it can swivel and it can switch from threads so let me show you how to put it together this connector is not very intuitive because i would think you would unscrew it and tighten it down but you actually twist the screw all the way tight under the fitting and then slide the poly over the barb now you can twist the poly or wobble it back and forth to get it over the barbs you just push the poly all the way to the end until it stops and then once you have the barb on, then you twist seemingly backward in order to tighten that poly onto that barb. Now it's easier to slip on, especially when it's warm. When the poly's warm, it flexes a little better, but it also can slip off easy if you screw it back off. Uh, just wiggle it back and forth and that'll help you get it on and off. Definitely, definitely easier to get on and off than the drip lock system in my experience. So if you noticed, what I connected to the poly was a male garden hose thread attachment. You'll see it abbreviated GHT. So that's all these thick, wider garden hose threads. You just get two female to female adapters to connect it from this. They also come in male to male in a nice package brass so it lasts longer. So all of these connections have a flat O-ring on the inside. So when you screw it together, the hose connects to that O-ring and that creates a watertight seal. Now, if it doesn't seal properly, you can add some plumber's tape to the threads go around several times. I like to go around like seven or eight times and that will help you create a watertight seal. 
All right, you can cut the poly with some regular scissors. I happen to have some PVC cutters, so I've just been using that. So for this whole corner, I am using the drip lock connection. So I went to a T connection that went to a valve so I can shut off this whole front section. Now, the nice thing about this is you can add on stuff later. So here I'm just adding a cap onto the T that I'm going to run to the backyard. Now, you can see with the drip lock, you simply just squeeze it in. You squeeze it in nice and tight, and it creates a good seal. So this is the whole head assembly. I ran it under some bark and under some brick. As long as there's no big kinks in it, then it seems to work pretty well. Uh, if there is a big 90 degree turn, you can put a, an elbow in it. And then at the end, you can just simply pinch it off using one of these plastic pieces or something that just uh, wraps around the end. So stick that in and then that creates the higher pressure for your microtubing anywhere along the line. Now, one thing you may have noticed that is not in my head assembly so far is the pressure reducer. Now, the reason it's not in my direct head assembly is because I only want this line going to the front section to be a reduced pressure. And the reasoning is, is that I want that full pressure to go to the back for another purpose. Now, the downside of doing it this way is you need a whole bunch of extra parts not in your head assembly because I have to go from poly back to a threaded, then to a pressure reducer, then to this female, female, back to threaded and back to poly. But we're testing things out to see how well this will work. Now, what I wanted to do is while I'm installing a water system, I wanted some high pressure water or lots of water to be able to fill a hot tub. Now, the hot tub is in the backyard, but I don't want super low pressure going to the hot tub. I want high pressure. I want lots of water. So that's why I decided to divide up the system so it's both a high pressure and a low pressure system. I thought, wouldn't it be nice just to be able to turn a valve and fill my hot tub a little bit or connect a hose and fill the whole hot tub by isolating the low pressure from the high pressure. So I thought I'd give it a shot. I wanted to see if the drip poly connect system could handle the high pressure. It's like 60 PSI static pressure. So from the front yard, I used poly to come all the way down. Now at the lowest point, I added a little valve here for a drain. That way I can leave most of the poly up and installed. Okay, and then I come up and these little clamps are used for conduit, but they work really well for these. They can just slip in through here. Now for these hard corners, I used a 90 degree elbow. This here is a compression fitting. And then I just attached them to things using these zip ties. Two zip ties can go through a really small space and you zip them together and it works pretty well. So you'll notice that I kept a little bit of an angle so that any unused water could drain out the system. And then this is my high pressure line. Now I want it to be high pressure because I want a lot more water coming through this part of the system. Now I use these compression fittings with a valve that goes to a compression to an elbow that goes down to a drip lock threaded and then an Ely quick connect and that drops straight over the hot tub. Now this is a very specific use case in this scenario, but you can use the same concept to hook any sort of garden hose. So say you have a pressure washer and you want to wash different sections around the house, but don't want to drag the garden hose all the way around the house. Well, you can have a high pressure section of your drip system give you high pressure or more water at different sections around the house before reducing the pressure for the drip. So for me, I just use a short hose to a Y to put the water into both of these filters so I don't have any air lock when I fill this up. Now, if you remember, I put a valve on the front section, so if I'm filling the whole hot tub, I can close the valve in the front, and then I can open the valve in the back, so I can shut off all the low-pressure sections of my drip and use the high pressure and get lots of water out of the same drip system. So from the high-pressure drip system, I come up on top of the deck and go through a valve so I can turn off the whole section. And then through a series of couplers and another 25 PSI pressure reducer, I'm back to my 25 PSI poly. So in the world of emitters, there's lots of different types. These are non-pressure compensating flag drippers. They come in different flow rates depending on your pressure, but this one is 4, 8, and 16 liters per hour. That's uh, 1, 2, and 4 gallons per hour. And then this is an adjustable micro sprayer. Sprays in 360, and you can change 
how far and how much. So just off your half inch poly, you can put the flag dripper directly into the half inch poly and drip it right there. Or if you want to go away from your half inch, you use this, it's called quarter inch micro tubing, and you can go directly out of the flag dripper. Now the flag dripper helps you control uh, the rate of flow coming depending on your pressure, unless there is pressure compensating. Now, I like to go a little bit beyond where my bush is going to be in case I want to change out the emitter or the sprayer at the end. Uh, so give yourself plenty of room, and then you just clip this microtubing with a pair of scissors. So there are lots of ways that you can do this combination of dripping. This is just one possible way. So to put these on, it does help when the tubing is warmer. So if you want to lay it out in the sun to get warmer, it does slip on a little bit better. Uh, but I like to twist these. It seems to go on a little bit better. It's just a barb. If you ever need to remove these, it's easiest just to clip it and then use a razor blade just to split the tube and then peel it off. Otherwise, you uh, risk uh, pulling off the barb and breaking off the plastic barb of the uh, uh, emitter itself. So these micro sprayers are completely adjustable. These are 360 degree micro sprayers. And you can adjust the radius. If you go counterclockwise, it increases the radius and the amount of water that comes out. Uh, these are just screw head tops. So if you go all the way counterclockwise, it does uh, just pop the top off. This is about uh, 25 PSI in the pressure reducer. If you don't have that, then they'll spray sky high. Uh, and then if you go all the way clockwise, you can turn off this uh, whole emitter itself. Now, these flag emitters, they are not they're not adjustable. I tried testing them out, and twisting them really does nothing, at least the ones that I got. So your best adjustment is they're done at the micro sprayer or put something uh, somewhere in line between the flag and the emitter. Now, they do have in-line quarter-inch adjustable uh, shutoff valves or uh, compensators, so that is also an option if you want to barb off to uh, multiple emitters. So to add a quarter inch uh, microtubing off your uh, half inch poly, use one of these puncture tools. Uh, they usually come in drip kits, but you can buy them and they're very cheap. But they work so well, I would definitely recommend doing that. Don't try to use something else. And then uh, I am trying out the flow control with one of these flag emitters. Now, you can have these drip directly off the half inch poly or have it go to a uh, quarter inch line here, which is what I'm doing. You can also just use a non-flow control barb and just use a, an L or a T-shaped and uh, run two lines of microtube off the same puncture hole in the half inch poly. And then you just put the end of your microtubing in a micro sprayer. Now you can do the math on these and figure out how much flow is coming out of each. And if you're doing a big garden, then it might be worth your time. Uh, but I like to put all your, I'll put all the sprayers where you want and then just make adjustments for how much water you think each plant will need. Now, the higher radius, again, the flag emitters don't do anything to adjust the pressure, so I wouldn't bother with that. In fact, I ended up taking out all of my flag drippers and not using them at all because they really didn't seem to make that much of a difference when I reduced the whole line down to a 25 PSI. Now, the thing I like about these micro sprayers is you can just Take them into the ground and you can reduce them down to pretty much a drip if you turn them to the almost off section and they just run straight down the spike. So kind of similar to a pressure compensating dripper. So just to prove that these flag emitters are not adjustable, I pulled one off and this was when the line was a full pressure, so not going through a pressure reducer. So twisting that just pulls the thing off and when you don't reduce the pressure of the whole line, that thing just sprays way high up into the air. So that's part of why uh, they recommend doing a pressure reducer for the whole half inch poly line. And then if you want, I would adjust just right at the micro sprayer or get some uh, pressure compensating drippers. You can see these are quite well adjustable. So you can mix and match pieces that you buy and see what works best. Now these are called fan emitters or they're sometimes called bubblers. Uh, they just look a little bit different. The functionality, though, is pretty much the same uh, as these other micro sprayers. Uh, the one thing I don't like about the, the fan bubblers is that when you turn them down just low enough, they don't really do a fan at all. They just kind of do a drip out of the top of it so it doesn't look cool unless you have it on a higher setting, which is kind of why I like the uh, regular micro sprayers because you can go 
to a really high setting or a really low setting. Uh, the higher setting obviously gives you a greater radius. Uh, it lets it spray out further and get more water out there. And there doesn't seem to be that much of a difference between the colors of uh, the different micro sprayers. They, they're, they, they're almost synonymous, but you can do your own tests and figure out uh, which one you like better. It might be more of a color aesthetic than anything. I mean, maybe these red ones do spray out a little further. So really just check the specs of the sprayers uh, to see if they work for the type of plants that you have. And you can see some of these, I just came out with a barb. Some of those barbs out of the poly do leak a little bit. So uh, that's just something to consider if you're putting it on a deck or something. So with these fan sprayers, you can see when it's a, a lower setting, especially it's it doesn't really look that great. And you have to turn it up high to really get that fan effect. So, I mean, the best thing you can do is probably just clip it off and put it back in the box. So this is just an example. This is a shutoff valve going to uh, one dripper. Usually you do this with with uh, multiple drippers, but you can use these, kind of hack them as a pressure compensator if you have a whole section that you want to compensate. Uh, but these are designed for shutoff valves. They're uh, not designed to control the flow. There's different ones for that. So these are called micro sprayers from Rainbird. They include a little quarter inch adjustable tubing to it. I like to, what I did is I kind of hacked this sprayer so it would be a very low pressure emitter. So, but that, I mean, they are very finicky because it's not necessarily designed for that. But hey, it works as long as your pressure is relatively uh, normal. And then you can have a whole bunch of these and just put one of these shutoff valves or better an adjustable flow and control a whole little section of microtubing. So uh, very versatile. So they also make emitters that go directly into your half-inch poly if you would rather do that. This works great if your poly is going directly through the bed of what you want to water. Uh, they they can be with either one of these a little hard to get in, but uh, once you get them in, they work, seem to work pretty well. Uh, just read the specs on it. You can see uh, how much of a stream it has. Like this has an 8-inch streams, uh, or you can hook it to a quarter-inch as well. Uh, but there's no real stand for the quarter-inch to fit on, so... Uh, I just tried these out on the half-inch poly, and they seem to work pretty well. You can also see my T-valves right next to it uh, for some other potential plants and moving them in different positions. Now, you really want to get these plugged all the way into the poly so they work the best. And then those are adjustable as well. So lots of options. Uh, just look out there. They also have uh, pot sprayers, uh, different misters, stands. So just take a look. And that is your introduction to the drip system. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, and take some time to enjoy the day. Kyler Studio.